Today, I'm getting rid of somewhere between seven and $10,000 worth of makeup. I don't even know why I have all of this anymore. From 2008 to 2020, I was referred to as a makeup guru, beauty influencer, whatever you wanna call it. Those days are pretty much behind me, so we're getting rid of a lot of this stuff. I'm here to talk to you about all of the untold stories from my favorite collabs to the things that didn't work out so well to why do I still even have all of this stuff? So today we have the confession of an ex-makeup guru. I'm just gonna burp and it's stuck. This is the most random, this is, none of these make sense. None of these drawers are organized in any way, shape or form. I literally just bought a liquid brown eyeliner and here's a completely perfect one. I started doing YouTube videos in 2008. This was before YouTube had ads. This was before YouTube had any kind of like monetization. And so the whole reason that I started doing it was because I was part of a community online, a live journal community, shout out to um, Matt Cosmetics on LJ for anyone back in the day. Basically what you would do is you would just film yourself doing your makeup, speed it up, throw it on YouTube. And that was like it. There's the garbage box. And then I remember, I think it was in 2009, where the YouTube said, hey, you can be invited to the partner program. And I'm like, cool, I get a banner on the top of my channel. Like that's all I thought that was the benefit. Then like a month or two months later, I got a check for $500 from YouTube. And I was like, oh my God, this actually is a thing. So that's kind of how everything started. It was not with a plan in mind. It was very different from now where like people start channels now knowing they could make an insane amount of money. This was before it was really, I mean, it was totally wild west, uncharted territory. Back then, it was literally Mac or bust. You used Mac cosmetics or you were like shunned. Everyone, at least, I was, I know that I was very elitist about Mac. It was like the biggest thing. I started working for them for a while. I had to like not talk about, you. if you worked for Mac, you couldn't talk about working for Mac anywhere else. So that was like, had to be like super hush hush. The first time that I really kind of saw that this was something special was when Mac actually brought me to Fashion Week to vlog about everything happening there. This had to be probably 2010. 2009, 2010, I genuinely don't remember. <laughs> and that's what makes me so sad right now. Mac has just, Mac clearly, like even though that was one of my first moments of being able to do something bigger as far as being a influencer or whatever, they never really took advantage of the online beauty influencer space like they could have. They had the world in their hands and they let it go and now, I mean, they don't like, it, it, it's really sad to me because they, they were a very big reason that I started doing any of this at all. Um, but yeah, anyways, going to Fashion Week with them was definitely the first time that like something crazy happened. I remember I got to stay in this amazing hotel that like was a skyscraper and it was wild. They got, got to go to all of these different shows and see all of this really, awesome artistic makeup because all fashion show makeup is very like avant-garde and very fun. So that was really, really cool. One of the shows was actually, um, oh my God, what's his name? Jeremy, I have to look it up. One of the designers was Jeremy Scott, which was just all bright, bold, neon colors. And it was super, super, super cool. Very much my jam. So it was really neat to be able to see makeup on that side of the fence, which is something that, you know, I had never seen before. See, this is the problem. Every time I try and do one of these declutters is I'm like, I could use this. Like at some point I'm gonna use this. And that's what I owe. Oh, that's why this is so hard because I'll look and I'll be like, oh, this. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, this yellow, like it's probably, look it, it still has pigmentation. It's fine. And then I end up with 400 freaking eyeliners that I'm never gonna touch. So this is actually impressive. I've gone through and decluttered my makeup many, many, many times over the years. So please don't think that this is like all that I've ever had. I don't wear lip stuff a lot. I'm not really a big fan of lip color. So like the fact that there's only a small portion of lip stuff here, I've thrown away so much. And it's again, the same thing of being like, maybe one day I'll wear. It's literally like being in a toxic relationship of like, I can change him. Like I will wear this. No, you won't, Nisha, like get over it. Another big moment for me was a trip to Paris I got to take with Sigma. This was in, I think it was in 2011. 
it's not gonna tell me on here. I don't know why I'm looking, but this was pretty much like one of the, if not the first influencer trip that ever happened. Sigma wanted to do a palette that was a collaboration of seven different YouTubers and they took us to Paris. We got to go to all of the amazing like monuments. We had like, literally we had a bus. It was like the, the top model bus, like the giant big black bus. It was like really cool. But we got to uh, stay there. We went to all of these different places and each of us had a different famous place in Paris that we had to design an eyeshadow color after. So mine was Versailles. It was actually really funny when we were there because at each of these places we got our own photo shoot so that we could like show, you know, why we chose the color and all this stuff. And I had a ton of tourists who wanted to take pictures with me because they saw that I was getting my photo taken by like a professional photographer. So they assumed I was someone famous. Um, that was interesting. I was wearing a Betsy Johnson dress and Betsy Johnson jewelry and all of this stuff. And I had a bunch of tourists who were like, can we please get a picture with you too? And they were taking pictures of me as I was getting my, my photos done. That was the most surreal moment ever. I also had a lot of the people who sold Eiffel Tower like trinkets and stuff yelling Lady Gaga at me for a very long, like extended period of time. It was weird. So, Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, oh, you buy this trinket. That's not a very, that was not a French accent. My eyeshadow color uh, was Versailles, like I said, and I wanted it to be something that was a little bit more toned down. I mean, you guys know me. If Originally, I wanted to do something that was bright gold crazy, but based off of what everyone else was doing, I figured having a more neutrally color that could kind of go with everything that had gold accents in it would be perfect. And it was. These make me depressed. These were like, I was obsessed with these and they just dry out so quickly. Like it's hard because I'm like, I want to believe it's good, but am I using any of it? No. So many naked palettes. You guys know the naked palettes. Naked palettes literally is like the original. Okay, that's good. That's a nice slice. Wait, okay, that's good. That's enough. Too many slices. It's enough slice. Why do we need this many naked palettes? These colors are not naked. Literally, I have such a toxic relationship that I'm like, but this one color is so pretty and I, I might use these colors. This palette, oh my gosh. Some of you guys, <laughs> this palette actually, this is a remake of an old palette from Sigma, but I, when this palette came out, you guys, oh my God, I was so excited. It was, this was the first time I'd ever seen like pastel, like creamy neon pastels out as makeup. And I get so excited when there's something unique that we haven't seen before. These, oh my God, this was, this was one of my like most excited moments in all of this. Of course, as you guys know, it's, it's not all sunshine and great things. And there's definitely been more than one brand issue that I have had. The first one that really comes to mind is Blender. So Evie Blender was this Kickstarter for this makeup blender that was essentially made of silicone. Um, it was kind of sticky. And I did a video basically going on about how it did not work well. I backed the Kickstarter, I wasn't sent it. And this was just all on my own. I paid my own money for it, all of that. And I did a video and I said, it doesn't work well. It's time that I gave a Evie Blender tutorial to some unnamed, because I'm not going to get into that drama, uh, unnamed bloggers. You're the ones that reviewed the Evie Blender and used it incorrectly on purpose to be clickbait basically so that you could get more views. I, I don't want to say it was clickbaity because it was true. Evie Blender YouTube actually replied to my video and told me that I was using it wrong. To be fair, if I was using it wrong, I would like to use it correctly to see if that changes my opinion on so it. So I used their tips, still didn't like it, and uh, thought that was the end of it. It was not. X Sparkage was more than fair to this product and gave it not one, but two tries to ensure the product was actually worth her time, which it, in the end was not. They had sent me a cease and desist letter and so mama had to lawyer up. Cease and desist this slander, defamation, liable, and unfair business practices immediately. Remove any post referring to our company and negative manner regarding this issue. That was a humongous Oh my gosh, you guys, I've, I've never actually talked about how much of an issue that was. I don't even know if I should say that. A lot of stuff happened with that. I mean, it went from just a negative review to being like, 
being threatened with a cease and desist, threatened to being sued. I had to get a lawyer, I had to talk to them, and it became such a much bigger deal than it had to originally be. I remember there were drama channels at the time were like, not like, I had to show receipts. And I was like, girl, why are you gonna go out there this little kid with the cease and desist, if there even was a cease and desist? We have not sent, in capital letters, we have not sent any cease and desist letter from our lawyers at this point. I had to prove that I wasn't making up all this stuff. I'm doing an update video because I was given a statement from EV Blender on my IG post and X Sparkage decided to come out with receipts and statements. And even though we talked a lot about it in the videos that I had posted, there was a lot that still happened after the fact with getting calls and having to deal with guilt being guilted about posting stuff there was so much stuff with that and it was such a giant headache but overall i mean <laughs> have you heard of ev blender anytime recently no so actually there is this new product <laughs> I don't even want to talk about, but it's it's in the same like ballpark as you blender. It's really weird. Anyways, that was probably out of everything. Uh, that and then Kat Von D. There was actually a video that I posted, I think in 2018, where I talked about how Kat Von D was going on about uh, anti-vaccines and all of this stuff. This is such a dangerous thing, not only to do, but to promote on a huge social platform like this. It's still relevant today, isn't it? <laughs> oh, anyways. Another thing that I was a part of that just shows that things aren't always the way that you, that it seems is collab. So collab was a collection that came out at Sally Beauty. I think it's still there. We were told we were going to create our own makeup, like be able to really like that this was gonna be a collection created by creators essentially. And then that's not what's exactly transpired. We came on more so as consultants versus actually creating product. And that was really difficult for me because I couldn't do anything about it. And you know, then you're in this, this tough situation where it's like, I signed a contract to do this, but I don't know how comfortable I feel about it. So that was one of the reasons I really didn't talk about collab very often while I was doing it because to be quite honest with you guys, I wasn't excited about it and I didn't have the confidence to be like, this isn't what I was told. There were products from collab that I really did like. There were some that I really didn't, but just on the whole, it was a little bit of smoke and mirrors. Is there a catharsis in this? A little bit. <laughs> Favorite collections over the years. Well, we talked about the Paris palette, the Creme de Couture from Sigma 2. Oh my God, one of my favorites ever. There was one from Mac a long, long, long time ago called uh, Foffy Net, actually. This girl's from Foffy Net. I was working at Mac when that collection came out and it was like bright colors and it was glitter and there was like all of this really fun elements. Barbie Loves Mac was another one that I remember going to uh, the Scottsdale Mall, a fancy mall in Arizona and waiting in line so that we could get the actual, they had like actual Mac Barbies and we were like so excited about them. Oh my God, what is this? Did it do it? Does it look like shit? Yes. <laughs> so basically this all comes down to, why do I still have all this? I don't wanna throw these things away. I can't give away a lot of it because if I've swatched it or used it, I can't donate it. I donate a lot of stuff to women's shelters and I can't if it's been opened and it's been looked at basically. And I can't do giveaways with that because then I run the risk of somebody telling me they got pink eye or they got, you know, something because of my makeup, even though I've never had pink eyes, so clearly it wouldn't be that, but they could say that. There's a lot of things where it makes it not safe for me to be able to give away a lot of my makeup, unless it's to friends and family. And then I just hold on to this guilt of feeling like I have all of this stuff, I need to keep it, even though it's just sitting there being wasting away anyways. I guess that's kind of my wisdom to give to you guys for 2022 is look for those toxic relationships in your life. It might not be people, you know? This is clearly all just things. So pay attention to that, whether it is products in your home, whether it's people, whether it's relationships with things, food, I, that's one I definitely struggle with is food, but lots of things and think about your relationships with them, how it's not serving you. I mean, just doing this, I'm not even done yet, but like, holy crap, oh my God. I already feel 10, oh, this is not 10 pounds. I already, 
<laughs> I don't know how much this weighs. It's very heavy, but I already feel 30 pounds lighter. I think this might be more than 30. I kind of want to weigh it. Oh my God. Let's weigh it. Okay, let's weigh it. <laughs> Come on, we have to pretend that this house is clean. Oh my God. <laughs> 26.6 pounds lighter. I thought it was gonna be way heavier than that. I feel 26.6 pounds lighter. It's definitely gonna get heavier when we're done with this. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for watching this. Thank you so much for all of you that have been around through this whole makeup guru, beauty influencer portion of my life. I appreciate you more than you know, and I hope you enjoy the content that is coming out soon. I ran too much. <laughs>